Hi everyone, and welcome to our channel. In this episode, I'd like to take a look at an interesting design concept referred to as parametric. Now I know the word parametric applies to many different disciplines, but in this case, I'm going to look at it in reference to the designs that are slices of wood, plywood, planks of lumber, that are stacked up and create a piece of dimensional art. I know there are other software programs can do this probably more easier, but let's try this with vCarve or Aspire. There are many applications where this could be used, and in many times you'll see this style of art in public spaces. Here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, there are benches within the subway systems that are used parametric designs to create piece of furniture. I'm not sure how comfortable it is as I've never sat on it, but I don't think it was meant to be comfortable. I think it was just meant to be a place to rest just for a bit and then keep moving along. Here's the process that I came up with. We have our job set up within our spire, and there's two key elements. One of them is the thickness of the wood or material that you're going to be using and the spacing that you want to have between each of those slats. Here the example I'm using is quarter inch material with a quarter inch space. The next key step is to draw the guidelines. If you've never drawn multiple guidelines before, here's the process. We just drag one over from the left hand side, a vertical one from the left hand side. And if we right click on it, we can say we would like to make multiple copies of the guidelines with a relative distance or a relative number. I chose 50. I know I needed 48, but I just added two just to show you the example. Those are the guidelines we're going to use to place our slats of wood when we create a design. If you want to hide the guidelines, simply click on the upper left square within your workspace. I have a few vectors creating waves. These were for Paul Roundtree. Here's his website. Pretty bright guy. You can use any shapes you want, but this is to recreate the water droplet that we see many times in designs. We take our vector, use the turn and spin, and unfortunately it didn't cover the entire workplace. Don't worry about the Z height at this point in time. It's more about making sure you have the right component ripple that you're looking for. So I'm going to delete this one because it's not what I wanted. But we'll take our right hand side node of our ripple effect and extend it out. We use our turn and spin again. And I want to make sure again it covers the entire workspace, which it does, indicated by the yellow color. If we're happy with the placement and the ripple effect, we can now go in and adjust the shape height and the base height. Because the concept is you want to use the software, Aspire, to actually create the piece of what you're looking to make with the depth that it's going to protrude off of the wall, for example. You can add additional droplets. Position them as need be. Again, you're in charge. You're the artist. With the second droplet, we can either adjust the base height or the shape height and the property of how it combines with the previous component. And we can duplicate that second drop and move it slightly over.
This is where the old adage of beauty is in the eye of the beholder comes into place. I'm going to hide some of the vectors now because I'm happy with my end design. Now we go into the model cross section. I click on the top left square to show my guidelines again and I go into the measure tool and at the bottom there's the option of model cross section. I'm going to create the vector of the cross section at each guideline. It's a bit tedious, but these are the vectors that you're going to use to cut out of your plywood or slabs of wood. It creates the vector as thick as you want it to be so that it protrudes from the wall and it gives you the undulations to be able to recreate the shape that you see. It's a simple process, though it does take a little bit of time. And once you have all of your vectors, the next little step becomes really quick and easy. I'm going to take this left hand vector and drag it over so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to eliminate the two end nodes on the left hand side. Join the remaining open vector with a straight line. That's the first plank that you would cut out with a profile pass. I'm going to take the second one and do exactly the same thing. And eliminate the end nodes from the wings that are standing out and join the remaining open vector with a straight line. That's all there is. You'll need to do this with each of the vectors that you've created. The one big problem that I see happening is forgetting which number and where it goes in reference to the other ones. So developing a numbering system for each of these is up to you and it could be very critical. I'm going to copy them to a new layer so that I can see what I have. Those are the first three vectors I've created and it's a simple profile toolpath. You may want to add tabs to hold them in place as you're cutting them out of your material. I would probably suggest not putting tabs on the face side or the side that's going to be protruding out from the wall simply because it's harder to clean up but you make that decision. The one nice thing about this process is that you can create as long in the Y a vector as you need to. You're only limited by your width because you can tile it if need be. Let's take a look at another example. I have two vectors, a rectangle and my undulating shape. I choose my undulating shape and create a component from it. And I'm taking my rectangle and I'm going to delete a section of the raindrop. But then recreate a component as a flat spot, more of a base, because I'm going to add a little sign here. That's sort of my foundation for my sign. Once you have your 3D model complete, you do exactly the same thing. Do the model cross section, and it'll show you how it undulates, and you can see where that foundation shape is. Let's get rid of this vector. You could see how thick these planks will be once they're cut based upon the model that I've created. 
and you repeat the process. If you want to see what it would look like, you certainly can create your own by deleting sections of that 3D model, just as a preview, so you know what you're going to be getting into. This is what it looks like in the preview with the software. And I actually did create one using 8th inch plywood. It could be a nice design for an office complex. It doesn't just have to be waves or raindrops. You can actually take a 3D model and slice it apart. I found this on the internet. In fact, you can use any 3D model, whether it's from the internet, from within the software itself. Again, just drawing the guidelines, using the model cross section to create the vectors. In this case, you'll need to set up some sort of reference point because the top of the model sort of expands as opposed to the bottom, which is straight across. How you attach them all together becomes the other important factor. You may put a board behind that with small slats. You may put a dowel through each of those slabs so they sort of hang together. If your material is thick enough, you can use some sort of clip to hang it on the wall individually. Again, the same process of eliminating the two nodes at the ends from the wings that were created and joining that open vector with a straight line. I've gone through and created all of the vectors that I needed, and you could see the undulations. Back to the problem of keeping them in the right order. If you'd like to create a preview of what it's going to look like within your software, here's an example of what you can do. I select the first vector and I create a quarter inch thick component of that first slab and every slab. So I have actually all of the components individually made. So there's my first four components. Now, how do we get them to look like the actual finished product? Well, if you've been watching my videos, you know I'm a big fan of the export-import concept. I'll take my first component and export it as an STL file. I click on the export icon, select the triangulate, and save it. You can see I've already done this before, just to prove to make sure it could happen. I say, okay, I want to replace it. And I do that with each of the components that I've created. In this case, there's 19.
Once I've exported all of the components individually, I then re-import them. Here's the little trick now. We don't want to bring them in as they were originally, but if we choose the right side, and make sure that our slider for the model position within our material is all the way at the bottom, that's the component as it would look in real life, hanging off the wall. We could slide it over to the position that it should be based upon our guidelines. And we do this with each of the components. Import it back in. In this case, choose the right side. Make sure the model is in the right position within the material. and slide it over. I turned the guidelines back on again and I zoomed in to make sure they sort of line up in their right position. I need to move the first one over a little bit more to the left. And once you've done this with each and every one of those component pieces and positioned them correctly, this is what it should look like. Sort of a proof of concept before you actually go and start cutting something out. I think it came out pretty good. A little bit of LED lighting behind it possibly could make a nice effect. This is something you could show your client. Sort of, as I said, proof of concept without actually cutting anything out. You could use different species of wood or materials. In that case, mix in some aluminum or brass with the wood. And it doesn't just have to be outside sources of the models. You could choose, for example, the wave that comes with the software. adjusting the shape height as required. You decide how much you want it to protrude off the wall. It doesn't matter how thick it's going to be from the software standpoint because you're not actually going to be cutting out this component. All you're going to be using is the vectors created for the profile path for each slab or each slice. So. In reality, you can have this wave be 6 inches thick or 12 inches thick. Even though your machine can't handle that in the Z, you're cutting out 3 quarter inch material, let's say. As long as you have it smaller, because as I've said earlier, if the Y is longer, you can always tile it. Same process. Eliminate the two nodes. Close the open vector with a straight line. And there's panel number one. You could be really creative in your design concepts. Here's another example, something a little bit different. You can create within Aspire shapes and components as we know. So if you took a blob of material, for example, a component, and you did some sculpting on it, you can create a bench. This is held together with simple dowels that run through it from left to right. So it's an easy process, just 
just takes a little bit of thinking and you can create some really, really nice ideas. That's my take on parametric designs. I hope this gives you some ideas of how creative you can be. Give it a try. I'd love to see what you come up with. If you'd like to learn more about the software, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell to be reminded of our new videos. And of course, as always, if you need help, send me an email, mm.mazolic.com. I'll be glad to help. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Enjoy. Enjoy.